everybody, my name is Tanya and welcome to the Reading Diversely tag. So this tag was created by Holly at Library at the Edge of the World and I was tagged a long time ago by Erica at Eric Rayable and yeah I'm very behind on tags at the moment and I'm finally filming some again to try and catch up but if you've tagged me in anything I am still getting to it, I've got a list of them, I'm just a little bit behind. The idea is for each of the continents to pick a book to recommend and a book that you're wanting to read written by authors from those continents. A few years ago now I was part of a group and I still am technically part of the group but haven't been participating anymore, a group on Goodreads called Around the World in 80 Books. And the idea was to read 80 books set in 80 different countries around the world in a year. Now instead of focusing on authors from those countries we were just focusing on books set in those countries. So a lot of the things I read for that were not necessarily authors that were from those areas but I still think that the group is a really good resource for a lot of books that are set in different countries and by extension covers a lot of books that are written by authors from different countries so I'll leave links to that down in the description. So as I said the idea behind this is to recommend a book that you've read and to show a book that you want to read from each continent. For some of these I've gotten a little bit carried away and I do have more than one book but hmm. so let's get into it. So the first continent will be Asia and the first book I have to recommend for that is technically a Canadian author although he was born in India and the book is set in India so I'm counting it for Asia but I've got some other ones and that is A Fine Balance by Rohindi Mystery. This book just left me wrecked at the end of it. This book is so heartbreaking. I was just completely numb when I finished it. I listened to the audiobook of this which was equally fantastic, just wonderful, very long, very large, so there was a lot of time invested to it and I still remember this section of road I was driving on when I finished this. It stuck with me that much and it's been a few years now since I read it but I still remember what section of road I was driving when I finished this and I just was numb and I just drove the rest of the maybe 15 minutes till I got home. Just silence, completely numb. It affected me that strongly. This book is set in 1970s India so it's set in during the time of the emergency and it follows four characters who come from very different walks of life who are thrown together during this time of emergency and the relationships that they form. It's just so heart-wrenching and so heartwarming and so wonderful the characters and their relationships and then oh it just wrecked me and everybody should read it. The next book I have to recommend is from a Japanese author and that is The Housekeeper and the Professor by Yoko Ogawa. This is the story of the professor, a mathematician who is the result of an accident only has an 80 minute memory so he has short term memory loss that only lasts for 80 minutes and then he's wiped clean again. It also follows the character of his housekeeper so every morning he's reintroduced to her and throughout the day he may forget her again and also her young son. Now the relationships between the three of them are just so touching given that every day is new for the professor. He is still such a brilliant man and is so very intelligent and then it's all taken away from him again. This was just so beautifully written and I loved every minute of it. It's just a really short little read. It doesn't take long at all but it's definitely worth it. And then the third book that I have to recommend for Asia, and yes I'm getting a little bit excessive, but this one I think is really important when it comes to reading diversely, and that's a Pakistani author, Mohsen Hamid, and his book The Reluctant Fundamentalist. This follows the character of a Pakistani man in America during the aftermath of 9-11, and how people's attitudes towards him change because of those attacks, and then the effect and changes that that causes in him, and that I think is really interesting. and and the effect that how you treat someone else can have on the decisions that they make. Okay, and for something that's on my TBR for Asia, I'm gonna go with something fairly common. I'm gonna say more Haruki Murakami. So I have read One Creative Format, Haruki Murakami. I listened to the audiobook of that last year, but it's the only one I've read so far and would really like to uh, read some more of his. Two that I have in my physical TBR by him are uh, The Wind Up Bird Chronicle, and then for Christmas I also got The Strange Library, which is a nice little one which won't take too long, but I'm hoping that I can read some more Murakami soon. Next up we're moving on to Africa, and the first book I want to recommend for Africa is Say You're One of Them by Yum Akpan. The author is a Nigerian priest. This is a collection of five short stories that are set in five different African countries and follow the lives of different children in those countries. It is beautiful and heartbreaking and absolutely horrible and really really touching and I highly recommend it. Because Say You're One of Them is quite a heavy and depressing read though very important, the next book I'm going to choose is something a little bit lighter and that is Baking Cakes in Kigali by Gail Parkin. 
Gail Parkin is from Zambia and the book itself is set in Rwanda. This one follows the character of Angel who has a cake making business. So she makes beautiful, gorgeous, intricate cakes for people in their community. Now for all that this is a lighter read and it is, it's just heartwarming and, and gorgeous and made me smile. It does still deal with some heavy issues. This one deals with female genital mutilation so it doesn't shy away from the harder topics but in general it is a much lighter read and is just a joy and again I listened to the audiobook of this one and it was superb. For the book that I'd like to read from Africa again I'm going to go with quite a common choice at the moment and say more books by Tim Amanda Nicosia Adichie. So the one I have here is Purple Hibiscus. I also have the audiobook of Americana and I'm planning on listening to that later in the month for the Blank Space book club that's reading at the moment. I have read Half of Your Sun by Adichie, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it and would really like to read more of her stuff. The next continent is North America and for this I have chosen The Sweetness at the Bottom of the Pie by Alan Bradley. This book is set in 1950s England but the author himself is actually Canadian. This story follows the character of Flavio de Luce, a almost 11 amateur chemist who turns amateur sleuth when she finds a dead body in their garden. It took me a little while to get into this first one and it wasn't until I read the second book that I really really got into this series and decided that I absolutely adored Flavia. She's a really interesting character, can be quite annoying, she's definitely a busybody but I just have to laugh at her antics and really really enjoy this series and would highly recommend it. The book that I'd like to read from North America is something that's come out recently that I'm really really excited about and that is Pioneer Girl by Laura Ingalls Wilder. Now Laura Ingalls Wilder is of course the writer of the Little House on the Prairie books and which sparked the TV series and this is the original story that she wanted to tell. So this is her autobiography that she wrote that she submitted to be published and was told that nobody would want to read that story and to change it and she censored it to become what turned into the children's books that are her autobiography but a, a much more sanitised version. And so the idea that this is her actual story, the story she wanted to tell, and kind of the warts and all story, the actual true story behind what her life was like in those days, I'm really, really excited to get into this. Next up is South America, and this is the country that I found the majority of the books that I read set in those countries aren't necessarily written by authors from those countries. So I've read quite a few books set in the countries of South America, but not all that much that's written by authors from that country. I have read Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez, which is excellent and I do definitely recommend it. But I've gone with someone different and that is Chilean American author Isabel Allende. Now this isn't the one that I particularly want to recommend, but I don't own the one that I particularly want to recommend. But this is also excellent. This is Zorro by her and it is the story of Zorro. So Zorro, Antonio Banderas, and it's his kind of origin story. So it starts off in Spain when he is a young boy and then we get to California and he becomes Zorro. And this was definitely a fun read. I've also read Evoluna by her as well. But one of hers that I particularly would like to recommend is Island Beneath the Sea. This is set largely in Haiti but also some in New Orleans. This is the story of Tete who becomes the slave of a Frenchman who inherits his father's sugar plantation in Haiti and follows her story and it is such a real epic saga of a read. So fantastic and I really really recommend it. For books that I want to read from South America I have another Gabriel Garcia Marquez and that is 100 Years of Solitude. I technically started the audiobook of this last month. I listened to the first hour with my mother when we were on a car trip together and we haven't coordinated to keep listening to it at this stage so we might have to restart. And then the second book that I'd like to read from South America is a Chilean author and that is Roberto Bolaño. I have here The Savage Detectives. I've heard that it is quite a difficult book to get through but I'm really intrigued by it and this is the one that I'd like to read. Next up we have Europe and the first book I have for this is The Tiger's Wife by Teo Obrit. So Teo Obrit is an author from former Yugoslavia. She's born in Belgrade and this book was published when she was only 26. This book is set in an unnamed Balkan country who's, that is recovering from years of war and it has elements of magical realism and it follows the character of Natalia who's struggling to deal with the death of her grandfather. That really doesn't say anything about what this is about and just how wonderful it is but I was just completely sucked in by the story of this one and would definitely like to get to a reread of it. The next book I have to recommend is from a Portuguese writer and that is Death with Interruptions by Jose Saramago. This one revolves around the character of Death and what would happen if Death stopped doing their job. So on the first day of the new year nobody dies and everyone thinks that's fantastic. There's no death, they'll live forever and then as time goes on maybe Death not doing their job isn't such a great thing after all. 
And then the third book I'm going to recommend from Europe, and yes, I know I'm getting a little bit excessive here, but the third book I'm going to recommend from Europe is an Irish writer, and that is The Story of Lucy Gold by William Trevor. This is a book that takes place in Ireland during the time of the Irish War of Independence and is completely heartbreaking. So it follows the story of Lucy, Lucy Gold and her family. So because of the fighting and the threat to their home, the Golds decide that they're going to take Lucy and they are going to move to England and Lucy doesn't want to leave her home, she doesn't want to leave Ireland, she loves it there and so then on the day that they're going to leave she runs away in the hope that they will stay and this sets off a whole chain of consequences, really really far reaching consequences that are just so heartbreaking and it's just such an emotional read but it was so beautiful and I loved it so much. As to what I'd like to read from Europe, I've got a couple more Jose Saramago books that I really, really want to get to. The first one is Blindness. This one's got quite a similar premise to parts of the Day of the Trivids without the Trivids part, in that the population goes blind and what happens from them and the corruption and the disintegration of society and it is meant to be fantastic and I've been meaning to read it for years and really, really like to get to it. The other Jose Saramago book that I own is The Double. This one follows the story of a man who rents out a video and as he's watching that video he discovers that one of the actors is his exact double. It looks exactly like him and he sets out on a quest to try and find that man and find out what's going on. And then lastly, my home continent, Oceania. So the first one that's of course going to come up here is one of my absolute all-time favourite authors and that is Julia Merlia. Now Julia Merlia is an Australian author but she was actually born in New Zealand so she's a New Zealand Australian author. Julia Merlia writes a struggle fantasy that's largely set in and around either Ireland or Britain um, and is just so good, so good. This is her first book and the first one that I read by her. This is the first book in the Seven Waters series. It's just wonderful and you should read something, anything by Julia Merlia. Next, for another Australian author, I have Kerry Greenwood. This is the first in the Friday Fisher series, Cocaine Blues. This is set in 1920s, mainly Melbourne, and follows the spunky character of Franny Fisher, this uh, striking figure on the front here, who is a independent woman who becomes a private detective. Franny is charming, I absolutely love her as a character, she's got a lot of spunk and is definitely outside the kind of gender defines pushing the boundaries at the time, and so I would highly recommend you read anything by Kerry Greenwood as well. And this is something a little bit different, another Australian author, I have The Dressmaker by Rosalie Hamm. This one's set in the wetlands of Victoria and is set in a very rural small town, in a very close-minded rural small town. It follows the character of Tilly who returns to the town to nurse her mother and is met with a lot of suspicion from the inhabitants of that town until they discover her amazing skill in dressmaking. And so she begins crafting amazing creations and she slowly wins the town over and as it says on the back, then she falls in love and things start to go terribly wrong. So turning for what I want to read from Oceana, I have chosen a New Zealand author and that is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. I don't think I can really tell you anything coherent about this at all except that I've heard fantastic fantastic things from many people including Holly from Library at the End of the World. I'm really really looking forward to getting it sometime soon. And then the last book that I've got to show you for this uh, tag is another one that I want to read from an Australian author and that is Jasper Jones by Craig Silvey. This is a book that I've heard to be described as the Australian To Kill a Mockingbird. I just realised it actually says that on the front cover, an Australian To Kill a Mockingbird. But I've heard it in other places from people, not actually from this cover. And so I would really like to get to this at some point as well. So that's everything that I want to show you for the Reading Diversely tag. I'm probably going to regret the amount of books that I've shown when I come to edit this and work out how long this is going to end up. So if you've read any of these books or have any questions, let me know down in the comments. As always, thank you all for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!